Hey guys, my name is Ed and welcome to another Behind the Collector Game and Toy Room Tours. Yeah, today we're taking a look at another collection. I'm beyond excited because there's lots of TMNT around here. So yeah, you know, every, every couple blocks there's gonna be one room in a house dedicated to 80s and 90s toys, video games. Today we're gonna take a look at one of those. Let's get started. Today we're over at Stockman's Collection. You can find this guy over on Instagram. I'll leave a link down below. This guy has 80 square meters of retro goodness. It's all divided over three rooms, two of which are already really decorated. As you can see over here, this looks freaking amazing. It's one of the cleanest, cleanest video and toy rooms I've been in. Uh, I should take an example to this. And there's one room that's kind of like, I'm gonna call it the archives. He's still working on some stuff in there and it's gonna look like this in a couple months, hopefully. So yeah, let's take a look at some of these turtles. So Stockman has been collecting for the past five years really actively. Basically what he told me is he's been collecting for, for his whole life, you know, toys and definitely turtles is one of the things that keeps him going, keeps him hunting for nostalgia, going to flea markets, looking online for all of this stuff. And when you see this wall, this freaking wall, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> I feel like I've, I've died and I've gone to heaven, really. Um, <laughs> right away, we're hit by one of the holy grails of the TMNT toy line, which is Scratch. I don't even want to touch this guy because, well, uh, I think he was released in 1993 as one of the last real original line of uh, the TMNT toy line based on the cartoons. This one is very sought after as well as Hotspot over here. Um, and you know, you got Sandstorm, Half Court. All of these are pretty darn <laughs> amazing to have in your collection, really. Um, if we go up one shelf, we can see some of the Shoguns. And uh, you might have noticed there's a couple Shoguns over here with uh, silver silver armor but there's also gold ones the gold ones are freaking insane trying to get these uh is, is is insane and just like you're gonna see variations on the shoguns over here you're gonna see more variations as we pluck through all of these turtle toys now we are over in europe so that means we do have a lot more variations card wise but also color wise uh and that's where you're gonna see loads of variations in this video <laughs> we're hit by freaking shogun shout uh if that's what his name is really there's some other really cool ones over here over here like the chrome ones you got chrome bebop rocksteady uh we have we even have a chrome foot soldier these are hard to come by even the adventurer turtles just down over here are pretty uh sick to find and over here we have some of the sumo wrestling teenage mutant ninja turtles uh coil force this guy freaking has everything um the one thing that is still a holy grail for stockman's collection is the undercover turtles now we all know donnie of the undercover series but later on in 1994 they released the undercover turtles another baseline of tmnt variations where you basically got an undercover turtle but this time they had a clot um 
that you could put on and off and they're very hard to come by they're very hard to find now Mint on card isn't the only thing he collects. He also has the freaking vehicles. Let's take a look. So here we have most of the TMNT stuff in the box. We do not only have vehicles, we have some of the mutating turtles. Now, everybody knows these, right? Um, there's even some giant mutations in the freaking box. Freaking hell. <laughs> That's simply amazing. One thing we really need to point out over here are these boxes down here. You got these bicycles, and actually, this is one I had as a kid. This is one I freaking had as a kid. It's freaking amazing. I still have the toy. I don't have the box, so this is definitely going to be one I'm going to be wanting. Um, these are pretty hard to come by, a pretty late release, and that's what we're basically going to be talking about the whole time during this video. Um, as I was saying before, you got the TMNT box variants. Over here you can see Tortue Ninja, which is the French. Um, which is the French naming for the turtles. You're gonna see boxes that have tortue on them for the same figurine. Um, there's also gonna be, you know, crossovers. So you, you will have English, you will have Dutch, you will have German even on some of these boxes. And that's where you're gonna see some of these boxes coming back also. Um, if we take a look over here, we got the mutant module. And one of those is the hero ones because basically over here, uh, they couldn't say ninja in the UK and I, I think in Germany neither so they had to rebrand it to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles um, sought after pretty sought after we got a seal sewer play set one of my favorite play sets of all time uh, a technodrome and these are basically like the two big play sets you had within uh, the turtles toy line freaking amazing cool to point out over here and I think we have the whole series of the caveman turtles these are freaking amazing i'm gonna be saying freaking amazing a lot over here <laughs> i'm I, I i have like leonardo he has them all in the freaking box that's amazing you got the turtle blimp uh one of the coolest vehicles in the cartoon the blimp too he also has in the box and this one is of course uh, to me it looks more like the blimp we saw in the cartoon so yeah, it's really cool to have that variation. Even some more blimps. Uh, this one is Tortue Ninja, you know, it's in French. A little more beat up, but still cool to have the box variant. And over here, in the end of the toy line, because it, it took till about 1997 till they decided to call it quits and go with the next mutation, which wasn't too good, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, they came out with all these mini mutant transports and just, little play sets uh, they put out so many of these little ones he has a couple so that's freaking amazing and lastly i'm gonna point out this one tmnt thing uh i'll probably point out more tmnt but this is a channel six news van with a box also a freaking holy grail when asked which one of the waves is most nostalgic and he's, he's like most attracted to it's got to be the movie star TMNT guys uh, these were based on a second movie they're made of rubber and we're gonna see a lot more rubber toys down the line in this video um, getting these and he has all four is, is, is proving to be really difficult right now I'm trying to source these and it's it's, it's driving me insane uh, you also have the TMNT tree toys over here and we actually have some in the regular line of the the toy line but over here you can see uh as seen in the turtle 2 movie the secret of the ooze so this is basically taka you'll probably also have razor you got super shredder over here they put them out in like the, these funky boxes well not funky boxes basically like the regular box art going with the basic line but they attach to the movie so that sticker is pretty sick over here we get to take a look at a couple of variations that we were talking about now not only do you have card variations as the mutant the tortue ninja uh the hero and the ninja one but you also have variations in color like you have the the gray beard uh panda con you have the white one over here you have different slashes and yeah it just keeps going on really got to point out that like one of my favorite ones has got to be 
the storage shell turtles. He has all four over here. Last week, I uh, got to at this one. Pretty psyched about getting the other ones too. Now, one thing that really pops up in your eye when you head into this first room is the display of loose figures. This is done freaking amazingly. It's, it's given me ideas to display my loose toys because basically they're all in a freaking tub, but over here, you not only have a clear overview of what you already have in your collection, but you get to enjoy it by looking at it all the time. Over here, we have a blue chrome dome. That thing is freaking amazing. <laughs> that that's uh that's probably gonna be like one of the toughest toys in in this whole uh in this whole vitrine to get in this whole thing to get really uh even some of the showguns with the armor in there uh lots of the basic line really nicely displayed and of course you got the teenage mutant hero store uh thingies over here I'm, I'm jealous you have two right <laughs> we got the tundra cats over here you got a bengali with the freaking hammer um they were a bit easier to come by over here in europe and you got driller also a very hard one to get one of the coolest things one of the best buys he's ever done is getting a yak face a vintage star wars yak face he found it over at a comic con for five euros in a box now this is like a two to three hundred dollar figure so that's pretty amazing and as you're gonna see a bit more over here even the TMNT wannabe toy lines is what he's collecting for. You got Street Sharks, you got Food Fighters, you got Toxic Crusaders, also a Playmates toy line. Pretty nice, pretty freaking nice. And now let's get into some Transformers. So right here we have a couple of biker mines, but mainly in this shelf unit we got Transformers. These are the loose ones, but you guys are probably wondering which ones does he have in box? The whole top of this thing is filled with Transformers in the box. Um, there's some cool stuff in here. You got the Overlord, which is one of the things he's most proud of getting into his collection. He missed out on it once, but now he's finally got it in his collection. We also have a Greek edition of the Devastator, which is called Excavator in Greek, I guess. Uh, you got Scorponok. He, he doesn't have enough space. I mean, he has three rooms, but he doesn't have enough space for his Transformers. Uh, sounds like a problem that I'm familiar with. <laughs> Over here we got uh, the Decepticom leader, we got Megatron, and these boxes are MB boxes. So yeah, for the Transformers fans out there, you know these guys go go a lot of uh, a lot of money. So that was basically the Decepticon part of this collection. If we head over to this part, of course, we got the Autobots. You know, the leader is Optimus Prime. And over here, we actually have some familiar ones. I did own a couple of Transformers, mainly the Dinobots up there, all with their freaking packaging. Damn, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I used to have some of these. So now we're over at the game side of the room. Over here, you got some PlayStation 1. Got some pretty cool Mega Drive stuff, some Sega stuff. Pretty much the coolest thing over here is probably gonna be the Power Rangers, the movie Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis Edition. Nice box. Oh my God, this is freaking cool. Freaking cool. And you can never go too far without seeing turtles. <laughs> There's turtles everywhere. Over here is a starting box. We found a couple weeks ago in one of my hunting adventures together with Stockman and my buddy Matthias. He picked up a Starwing Super Nintendo sleeved edition for only 60 euros. Crazy, crazy. You got, I got caught slipping on that one. Uh, over here, we got the SNES down here and the N64 collection. Now, N64 is one of the systems he grew up with. Uh, one of his favorite games is Ocarina of Time. Who doesn't love that game? And yeah, there's some good stuff in here. You got freaking separation anxiety, the PAL version. Pretty hard to come by. Pretty cool Spider-Man game as well. Hmm. So as you can see, most of these games are boxed, pretty much all of them. He kind of made the shift in focusing on games that he only, that, that he that he decided to go with all of the boxed ones. And yeah, 
seems to be working out pretty cool. Pretty cool. Another system he had as a kid was the Game Boy. Of course, we need to point out another pal, TMNT Hero NES set over here. And uh, yeah, this box was really important to get because it was the first Game Boy he ever gotten. There's some really cool Game Boy set boxes out here in Europe and that's definitely one of them. Oh yeah, even some Street Sharks. Uh, a Street Shark on freaking card. Most of them are, are, are basically gonna be in these tiny boxes over here. Pretty cool to get and of course some NES games. You can't go can you really go wrong with NES games? I don't think so. Let's head over to the Master of the Universe stuff. He has a freaking Eternia. And it's it's huge. I, I now finally get why this playset is so hard to come by. There's a ton of loose parts to this playset. It is the biggest playset within the Mattel Master of the Universe toy line. Of course, he has the other ones boxed. And uh, this thing is freaking amazing. How cool is this display of vintage Master of the Universe stuff. There's so much stuff I still want. Uh, even as the European version, no, this is the American version of Scare Glow. Yeah, I kind of got distracted. Um, so you got the green staff. Uh, the European version actually has a glow in the dark one. Freaking Scare Glow. Got a, got a scare glow in my hands, guys. Some other cool stuff we're gonna take a look at, and probably one of the odd things over here has got to be this ninja, and he's on a freaking cat. I, 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 I don't even know. Uh, is this in the regular toy line? Um, no, it's not, guys. Uh, this is just one of the things he picked up on his many trips to the flea market, and he was like, hey, ninja would fit great on this cat, and did you guys see it? I don't think so. It, it fits in perfectly. It looks freaking great. And uh, yeah, this, this is just the cool stuff you can do with the Masters of the Universe toy line. Really add and, uh, and, and play with stuff. Now, one of the coolest finds Masters of the Universe wise in Belgium was a couple of years ago. A guy went over to a garage sale and they had a couple of Masters of the Universe toys over there. They didn't just have them loose. They had them in the box. And basically, the toys you can see up here, so you got Squeeze, Snake Face, Mosquito, there were like 30, 40, maybe 50 out there complete on card in a shipping box there. The guy was asking one euro a piece for these. So when a friend of Stockman picked them up, uh, he was like, yeah, I gotta offer some of these to my friends. And that's how he got these three really amazingly rare toys on card. These are, of course, the European boxes, making them a, even a bit more harder to come by. Yeah, it's freaking amazing. Love this guy, Mosquito. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah, just like, don't wanna drop that. <laughs> just like those up here, you got Fright Fighter over here. There's the boxed castles. You got Castle Gray Skull, you got the Snake Mountain over here, and you got a Spider down there. So yeah, get, get, get some pretty cool 80s toys over here. Then we strolled down the hallway and over here, we're met by G.I. Joe figurines. Pretty cool G.I. Joe figurines and even some European exclusives. You got Spirit over here, a uh, really cool Indian dude, and you got the Tiger Force. These ones are pretty sought after. I actually really love the way this is displayed. These cases are freaking amazing, great for displaying your G.I. Joes. And there's a freaking Gremlin over there. Right now, we're over in the archives. This room, he still needs to kind of uh, cheer up a bit. All you see over here is racks stacked to the stacked to the ceiling with toys. Over here, we got a couple of toy lines he also collects for. He got Power Rangers. He's got a Dragon Zord. I like I like Dragon Zord. That's one I want to get. Um, and of course, Jurassic Park. Another one of these rubbery turtles. Now, this one I have never seen before. Um, this one is probably one you're really gonna want to get. Jurassic Park over here. There's even some Jurassic Park toys in the box down here. And my tiny eye spots some other stuff. He's also a freaking foot soldier army builder. Another guy I'm gonna be bidding up against trying to get a really cool 
foot soldier army. <laughs> 90s toys, you got TMNT stuff over here, but there's also some 80s toys that he's really into. There's a lot of Star Wars over here, something you can't find over in freaking Belgium. So in Europe, you had two companies producing the Star Wars toys. You had the Palette toy over here and you had Kenner just releasing it. Um, these are two variations of the Millennium Falcon. Awesome vehicle in the Star Wars series. Uh, this one is from the Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back movie. And you never see this stuff in freaking Europe. It's so hard to come by and he has so much. <laughs> He's got the boggling I still need. This this was kind of tucked away. Um, and he's got so much freaking cool Lego stuff. Uh, the same Lego series I'm collecting for, actually. He's got the pirates. He's got some of the castle stuff. Uh, it's one of the things he still wants to put in this room and really showcase. Freaking hell, man. This, this play set was amazing. So as you can see, there's still a bit more work to be done over in this second room. There's still something to be found in every little corner you pass into. So much retro stuff, it is freaking amazing. Um, it teaches me about having a retro toy and game room means that you're gonna be, you know, reconfigurating, redecorating it the whole time. It's freaking amazing to be walking around over here and oh, I, I just love it here, guys. I hope we can come back in like a year and maybe see how this room looks. Uh, hopefully it's going to be, you know, finished, but like, like we all know, you can never really finish a toy room. You always keep evolving it, changing it around, and that's what's so cool about this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to check out another game room tour I did, check out the playlist you'll be able to click on in just a few moments. Maybe hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye!